Welcome to Energy Quest. We're here today with Michael Matthews. That's right. So that's the CEO of Dicing Energy, right? Correct. So Dicing is a solar energy company. Michael will tell us all about that business. Okay. So viewers, meet Michael. Hi. <laughs> so Michael, you're welcome to Energy Quest. Thank you. Um, we have, we have much interest. Yes, we do energy all together, but I think the renewable corner is getting more and more interesting. I mean, there's so much talk about it. We're hot right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. First, tell us why Dicing Energy, why solar business, all that. Um, I mean, the short story is uh, I, I've always been interested in renewable energy and solar okay. energy. And uh, a few years ago, I came back because I was based in the UK at the time, I came back to visit my dad. Okay. And I was like, yeah, I'm thinking of starting a company uh, in renewable energy and solar. Um, you know, I'm surprised that nobody's doing it. I'm surprised that it's not something that is big in the system, considering we live in Ghana. Sunshine is, ab sunshine. is abundant, yeah. right? So, you know, I, I, I was like, in two minds as to whether I would actually go ahead with the with, with, with the business. But I spoke to my dad and he was like, you know, at the end of the day, these guys are out. They're, they're getting old, they're getting, it's all about the young generation and what we can do to improve ourselves. And I realized that, you know, a lot of industry, a lot of business require energy to progress. And the energy infrastructure that's available, unfortunately, is inadequate. is inadequate to do the job. So my dream and my ambitions of a solar business basically ties in nicely. Okay. So, so do you have a background in that? I didn't have a background in that, but I'm a, is it, are you a geek. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if I'm interested in something... I pick up information like a sponge and pursue it. And I pursue it and you know, and pull on that string mm -hmm. and put on that string has led me here. Wow. And I'm well, loving it. What did you actually study? I'm actually a lawyer. Oh wow. I graduated law school, worked in a law firm for a short while. Um my dad's actually a barrister in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Um, well respected. Um but I, I decided I there are too many lawyers in the family. Okay. So my uncle was a lawyer. So <laughs> oh. my, my brother studied law. Uh -huh. So I figured my cousins are lawyers. I think I figured there's enough lawyers no, in the family. No, let's, so let's, and, and energy is essential. You and energy is essential. We energy. There you go. And it's a part of everybody's life. It's basic. So why not? Let's do energy. It's more fun. Good. <laughs> Which part of the solar... Um, Solar energy, I mean, industry, are you in? Are you manufacturing? Are you installing? Are you what exactly are you doing? So, we do a combination of manufacturing, installing, and supplying. Okay, so we work closely with Chinese manufacturers, um, and we bring in products, mm -hmm. solar related products, and uh, in terms, we also manufacture like panels, but we also supply, mm -hmm. so we sell to customers and other installers and we install ourselves so it's a combination yeah. of all three you're doing everything in this space we're trying to because uh, unfortunately when we arrived um the market wasn't very well developed so you found out you had to pretty much do everything yourself um yeah. you didn't have that support in the system so it's like baking a cake you need That's all the ingredients for the yeah, cake yeah. <laughs> but if you know if, if you have no eggs in the system you can't really bake your cake so you have to figure out how to get eggs and get good eggs at that so well, but i mean that then leads you to growth what's exactly. what's the plan what's the future of dicing so the future really is to grow to be the largest at least one of the largest energy companies in africa let's take the largest oh largest is fine yeah <laughs> i'll take it but um Try to be more. my wife said I'm too, I'm, I'm I'm too sometimes I'm, my head is in class. <laughs> I need to, to be put, fair. Put my feet on the ground sometimes. But um keep it there. But generally I think we the aim is one of the like the biggest. Uh-huh. 
uh, only biggest energy companies in in uh, in Africa. And uh, but focusing on Ghana, our slogan is "Power to the People," right? So we want to get the average Ghanaian to a point where they become very, very comfortable with their energy demand. How do you think the whole solar thing is contributing to? all that talk about environmental sustainability and climate and all that. How do you think it's going to It's playing a big role, but it's, it, it, you see, sometimes they say if you, if you want to shoot at the target or you're aiming for a target, you want to shoot at the target. You don't, you don't aim where the target is. Mm -hmm. You aim where the target is going to be. Oh, okay. Right. That's an interesting one. Otherwise. You if, miss it. If, if the target is moving and you fire at where the target is, by the time your bullet gets there, you miss. Yeah. So you have, look, studying the energy industry, I predict or I can see based on everything that I've experienced yeah. and everything that we're working towards, that solar will play the biggest role. Really? In terms of energy demand mm -hmm. in Ghana by 2050. That's almost here. And 2050 is, it might seem that far away, but yeah, not so far. it's not so far oh, away. Yeah. Reason being that, you know, the cost of solar continues to drop. And the every so the every eventually, if the trends continue, the everyday Ghanaian will be able to afford solar. Mm -hmm. So one analogy I use is think, of, think about it like a borehole. At one point, to dig a ball was ridiculously expensive. Most Ghanaians couldn't afford, but we are now at a point where to dig a ball roughly about 10,000 cities. Even less. Less in some cases. So the average Ghanaian should be able to afford. Should be able to afford. So if you do some savings, or it's 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 within. Gets in there. It's, it it but gets in there. Business with a futuristic view. Yeah. That means that so much work has to be done that would not necessarily be realized now. Yeah. Definitely have challenges. 100%. Yeah. So what kind of challenges do you have looking at that whole one? The main challenge at the moment is, there are several. Um, I say financial is one of the biggest challenges. So Dyson Energy is basically self-financed. Mm -hmm. We, You know, we are... We don't have any foreign investors. We don't have any of that. Truly indigenous, right? Truly indigenous, Ghanaian, through mm -hmm. and through. Okay. Right? Financed by my own pocket. But in reality, a business like ours yeah. should have investors backing us, should have finance available to us. We should be able to walk into a bank and sit down the way without being... It? So if you take out a loan at, you know, 40, 50, 60%, <laughs> APR... Uh -huh. um, you know, you might as well just hand the keys of the business over to the bank yeah. and go home because you can't pay that. It's, it's not realistic, mm -hmm. right? And I don't know where you get those kind of returns anyway, legally anyway. <laughs> so, no, I'm happy you added legally. So, it, so we have to be realistic. Now, going back to your point is the investments will be made will be realized much later, later. on, mm -hmm. right? So we have to make those investments. Now, in order to help us, we don't need as a policy side of things. Yeah. The unfortunately, I know I mean I'm close to all the guys at uh, LG Commission, they do their best. You, you know, they make policies, but sometimes it's not just about the policy, it's about the policing or the That's implementation, the practicality of it. Now, unfortunately on that side we are we are lacking. Mm -hmm. To, to to be <laughs> I, I like how you're putting it nice and you know <laughs> I'm a bit more generous we can do better in that regard now I'll give you I'll give you just a quick example a container of solar panels roughly give or take sometimes the prices go down about seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars now to bring that container of panels into the country it, you have to pay another seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars in duty that's almost a hundred percent only Yes, really. You need to buy the product again. So you need to buy it, but now imagine <laughs> now, and that product is now in, and I have to sell that product to the to the to Ghanaian, to businessman, to then your markup, and then you have to put a markup on that, mm -hmm. and then you see the so the cost. I, but if you on the flip side, 
in Europe, in America, in China, South America, it, all across the world. Yeah. The incentives supporting anything green, right? Green energy infrastructure. I, I don't get how the, that those two go together because, I mean, if everybody's trying to support the world going green, and then we're still charging lots of taxes and. I mean, we're drawing back the industry yeah. wells we work hard. So like I said, it's the practicality of it. You know, it's all, it's theory is all well and good, but <laughs> on the ground, how does it work? So how do we solve all these? What, um, pose? what you, suggestions do you have? Uh, they can bring me in and pay me some consultancy. <laughs> and then you to, 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 to give them some advice on how to approach the problem. But then again, you also have to remember that not everything is black and white. Right, it's possible that people within the industry like it like that. Really, it's possible. You know, you have people who are benefiting off the old system. No, who, unless of course, you know, governments. Of course, yeah, yeah, making yeah money exactly, money. making money. Like besides government, I think you know, every business person is not in a good place as far as that is concerned. So. Right. So, but the but the question is, if the people with the power choose not to make changes there are reasons they work behind that people you know i i mean i agree with they you need to consider <laughs> what we go through in they do they do indeed um but, but like i said it all comes down to the reality of the situation and that is the reality yeah so it makes the product more expensive and uh, less accessible to the average Ghanaian. now we we have a slogan which is basically the power to the people that's the Dyson Energy slogan, and we mean that. We really mean that. One thing I tried to get across is solar is almost inevitable in a sense. Mm -hmm. So you could, you know, have your 100% duty at the port. You could eventually, a time is coming when people will go, adapt. Will, will go solar. I, I Just think, because. Do you think it's a deterrent? I, think I don't know. <laughs> Whether it's intentional or not intentional, it's still a deterrent because if you, the markup, if your duty is 100% on the product, right? No, so, so okay, so I, it, it, in a sense, time to ask you, yeah. about right. what do you think about integration of solar properly into the grid, you know? It's a good idea, mm -hmm. but practically how effective that would be, I'm not 100% confident because you have to have a modern electrical infrastructure to be able to handle mm -hmm. solar in a particular way. I'll give you an example. So we all know very basically solar works excellently during the day because the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. So what happens at nighttime? Yeah. Now you have to move into storage, right? Now we're talking about utility scale storage, large scale storage, um, which is just a new technology and requires heavy investment. Now, you and I both know, unfortunately, the system doesn't have the opportunity to start investing heavily in things like mm -hmm. that. So straight away, you have to disadvantage with regards to the solar because mm -hmm. you need power in four seven. But systems where, I mean, few companies or individuals who can afford this are not able to sell back. Yes. In fact, as well. it's worse than that. If you... When we first, I'll tell you a funny story actually. <laughs> so when we did our first installation, you know, we were told, yes, the net metering system is in place. You know, it's, on, it's all on the, it's on the website, but practically. Oh, that's on ECG website. Yeah, it was on, the, on ECG yeah. website. So, but practically getting hold of those net meters was very difficult. In, mm -hmm. in fact, we never got the, the meters. So somebody has them somewhere. Maybe maybe there maybe there's a guy out there begging people to take net meters. <laughs> yeah. but we just don't know who the guy is. <laughs> but you know, now what we found is when you actually export to the grid, mm -hmm. you get charged. The opposite. You rather get charged. So you get charged when you take from the grid, mm -hmm. and you get charged when, when you, you spend, export. When you export to the grid. Why is that? It's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you you can interview yeah, someone who has you, you, you better could, answers. Have you attempted? Yes, we so you've been to ACG. You've tried to write to them. I mean, to... we there's only so much I can do. I can focus on the negative, 
mm-hmm. lack of focus on the positive. Of course, but sometimes also you should contribute to solutions to problems. We, so we, you can write to them. We can, yeah. How, are we sure they know this is what is happening? We spent a year yeah. trying to that. working on trying to get the net meter because realistically the, the net metering would really reduce really reduces the cost to the installation. Uh-huh. So if you have a net meter in place, yeah. you don't need a battery. You don't need yeah. to store your excess. It it you send to the grid and at night time when you need it, you take it back. Uh-huh. Great. Everyone's happy. Right? But unfortunately, we found that it just, just wasn't uh-huh. working. just wasn't. So let's just say it's a system that we do not actually have. It's a system well, that we yeah. don't have now. Um, it could be grid infrastructure problems. It could be the the list of issues could be, you know, as long how long how long is a piece of string? It could be endless, right? Well, yeah. At the end of the day, it's all about the results. The results are we need to get as many people independent when it comes yeah. to energy consumption as possible and as quickly as possible. How easy would it be for us to have? communal benefits of solar how yeah it's much easier because in terms of the, the infrastructure demands aren't as much so if you had a, say a, a village that's what you call microgrids right mm-hmm. so the infrastructure requirements to to put together a microgrid isn't as much as say an infrastructure requirement to yeah. uh, to run a city on solar mm-hmm. so it's like how do you eat an elephant it's so one bite at a time, right? Cut it up and take it in bits. Yeah, so if you chop it up into little bits, it becomes a lot more straightforward and easier to uh, to implement. So, and I think going oh, forward, that's actually how um, solar will develop eventually. Yeah, but is, is that already become normal here, microgrid systems? Yes. Yeah. so in fact, I, I, was, I had a call yesterday with a developer, uh, and there are several projects ongoing similar to to this who is having a lot of issues trying to get um the grid hooked up to his development okay or he's had issues in the past and he now wants his new development mm-hmm. to be powered 100 percent by solar so these microgrid systems i want you to explain to my viewers how they work so if you um yeah so you get that done in some community you said the solar panels all that i mean how do we get it do we still you still need easy to do a distribution or how does the whole system work well generally you have to have what you they yeah, got distribution license so for instance you have independent power producers oh do they give those distribution licenses yes yeah, so the the energy commission could could issue licenses to um Companies who, for instance, want to build a large solar farm mm-hmm. and they contribute to the energy grid. Mm-hmm. That's one aspect of it. Yeah. And the other aspect is individual consumption. So you and I, for instance, can put solar on our houses. We don't need it because we're not contributing to the grid in any way. So we we'll scale that up to, say, uh, an estate, mm-hmm. right? The concept still applies. Mm-hmm. Um, if each house has solar installed to run yeah, every day it's almost, it's almost like a package that comes with the house okay so the developers that i partner with and i work with they view that as a selling point for their property so they're in the, the business of selling houses yeah. if they go well we're selling houses and our houses are oh, fully okay. solar powered for oh, idea it encourages people to buy all right so it's a win-win mm-hmm. for the for everybody involved